If you suck at CSS, then here are 7 tips that can help you improve your CSS code and take you from this to this. First of all, you need to have a good understanding of CSS box model. It is a rectangular box that is granted to every element in CSS, which is why having a good understanding of box model is essential to be good at CSS. You can check it in DevTools under the elements tab. Every box model consists of actual content, padding, borders, and margin. A good understanding of box models help you debug unexpected staggering issues and bugs, which is why it is important to learn it. And that takes us to next point, which is not to use the important tag. A reserved keyword with an exclamation mark as a prefix can be used when starting. Adding important to any property makes it a high priority. This means that if two properties are targeting the same div element, the one with important tag will be applied to it. This makes the style sheet difficult to maintain and can cause unexpected behaviors. Instead, what you can do is to be more specific when targeting classes. For example, if you target a p tag with a class description inside a div container, you can target it by div dot description. This is a much better way than using the important tag. And the more specific you are, the higher the priority of the styling is. There are many disadvantages with writing inline CSS, and you should not use any inline CSS in your code until unless it's the only option you have. Using inline CSS makes your code disorganized and your CSS is mixed up with your HTML code. This is a problem when you are debugging the code, making changes and finding the properties in your external CSS. Now if you have used Tailwind CSS and thinking about that, that is not inline CSS. It just has utility classes to add to your HTML code and that is completely fine. If you are using static values for let's say colors, you might end up writing the same value at 10 different places. But what happens if you decide to change the hex value of the color? You have to go through the code and modify it everywhere. Think of this as if you are writing a variable in JavaScript and you have a value that is used at multiple places. You will make a variable for it and use that variable everywhere needed. Similarly in CSS, the best practice is to declare your value in a variable and use that variable anywhere you need. This way, when you want to change the value, you only need to do it in one place. Another tip for CSS is to avoid using absolute units such as pixels and use relative units as much as possible. The issue with absolute unit is that they are fixed regardless of the window size. The value is same whether you are on desktop or phone. The relative unit makes it easy to have a responsive design. For example, when adjusting fonts, you can set the base value in HTML and then use the RAM unit. Later on, in the media queries, you only need to adjust the base font and rest of the values will be adjusted automatically. The default font size is 16 pixel, but you can set it to 62.5% in HTML, which makes it 10 pixel because 10 by 16 multiplied by 100 is equals to 62.5%. In this way, you can change the percentage by a minor percent in media queries which will fix the font sizes most of the time. If you are not using Flexbox, you must start using it. But if you are using it, you already know how awesome they are. But since they are one dimensional, meaning you can either only set them vertical or horizontal. This as a result become limitation in some cases. For example, if there are elements that you want to align horizontally as well as vertically, you can't do that with Flexbox, but you can combine Flexbox and Grid in those scenarios. An example of this is to divide your website into different sections using Grid. Then use Flexbox inside each block to align items. This way, using Flexbox inside Grid, you can modify your website layout super easy. Lastly, you may have seen these lines somewhere near the heading in different websites. If you want to achieve this, you don't need to use a separate span or a div container for this. Instead, you can use a pseudo argument before or after to add those lines. This way, you don't need an extra HTML argument but handle everything in CSS. In this case, you have to make sure to align it according to the heading by using position relative on the heading and then style your align in the pseudo argument. So those are some of the ways or tips to improve your CSS. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I hope to see you again in the next video.